Konnichiwa. Hello from London. And this is the second of my monthly updates on my new language project, which is learning Japanese. In a moment, I'll remind you what the project was and I'll let you know how it's been going in the last month. But first of all, if you're new to the channel, channel <laughs> welcome. I'm Dr. Gareth Popkins and here is all about language learning. So if you want to get my free training on how to get off to a flying start with your language learning or take your own skills up to the next level, then there are links to some webinars uh, underneath this video. Anyway, at the start of the year, I announced that I was going to try and get as far as I can with Japanese before I attend the Polyglot Conference in October on my first visit to Japan. Now, this isn't some macho project where I'm going to, you know, flog myself to prove some Herculean, to achieve some Herculean feat. I'm simply building in, I was aiming to do half an hour a day on Japanese between the beginning of the year and the end of September and to see where I get. Now, if I'd done my 30 minutes a day in February then, that would have been 14 hours. The good news is I actually managed 17 hours altogether. Although some of that was more concentrated, I didn't manage to study on every day and there are actually 22 days when I did at least half an hour. Uh, the poorest week was really the third week in February when I had a lot of other stuff on and my routines got a bit disrupted and I actually missed three days. Now the core uh, the, around which I'm structuring my focused work is the Japanese from Zero textbook series. There are four of these. I want to get through the first three of them in nine months. So obviously one every three months. And um, to keep on target, I would have ne needed to get to the end of Unit 7 uh, by the end of the second month. I was actually already a bit ahead of myself and I only managed to finish 7 and actually 8 during uh, February. So I'm still ahead, but the reason I went rather slower in the second month than in the first was partly because I doubled back and went through again the units, units one to six that I'd already covered and the four pre-units in Japanese from zero. Another thing I did was go back to the uh, resources online that go with Japanese from zero. I'd already looked at author George Trombley's, some of his videos on the YouTube channel, but there's also a dedicated website called yesjapan.com in which the YouTube videos are also available embedded. But that also tracks in an interactive way online the units in each of the course books. And you can follow, I think the first course you can follow for three for free. So what I've been doing is not rereading all the explanations in the online format, but I have been listening to the audio files and doing some of the interactive exercises uh, to make sure I'm getting the pronunciation correct and to reinforce what I've already done as I've been reviewing the chapters in Japanese from zero. So checking out those online resources was something I wanted to do again in month two and something I managed to achieve. Now another reason I was going rather more slowly with Japanese from zero uh, in the last month was because I kicked off learning the Chinese characters, the kanji, from Heisig's Remembering the Kanji, uh, which is going to be a, a really major part of my uh, efforts to learn Japanese, of course. This is no small task. There are 2,200 kanji, which you're supposed to know when you graduate high school in Japan, and they're all covered in this book. Heisig's method, I already know because I've learned the kana, so that's the hiragana and the katagana. They're the syllable-based um, uh, alphabets, if you like, which Japanese combines with the Chinese characters. And that was a much, uh, a much easier task, something I was able to do relatively quickly during the first month. But this one will be ongoing and I worked out, you know, if I wanted to cover all 2,200 in nine months, I'd have to do about 10 a day, 60 a week. Uh, but, you know, at the end of February, that would have meant I'd have done 280. Uh, but actually, I only did 160. But this isn't a race. Uh, as I say, I'm not trying to break my back here. And although I haven't got as far as I'd need to, I'm not pacing myself to finish the whole book before I travel to Japan, I am enjoying the process. Uh, the writing out of the kanji and trying to form the mental images, which is actually the most important part. You associate each of the primitive elements, as Heisig calls them, of the more complicated characters with an image, and then taking the images, combining them together as they appear in the character, you create a little story. He does this 
for you in the early chapters of the book, where I still am. Later on, you have to start creating your own stories. And he really emphasises the power of the mental image here, rather than just practising writing out and trying to remember that way. Um, so you, you really need to put some thought into creating these wacky images and, and making them your own. So that's what I'm doing, but I am also enjoying just the physical act with a pencil of writing out and practising these kanji. And, and actually the physical writing, I think, is quite important to learn the stroke order uh, to ensure that you write fluently and that the, the, the way you write looks good. And also that's important for, uh, for working sometimes with um, online and electronic interfaces, I gather, that you get the stroke order correct. So I'll be pressing on uh, whenever possible. I want to try and regularise my, regularize my work on High Sig this month uh, with, with that task. Now, I also wanted to run a couple of secondary courses uh, for variety, really, and often because, also because I think it's useful to have, uh, um, you know, things explained by a second voice, if you like, to come at them from a different angle. So, what I've done is I've got hold of the Assimile Le Japonais Sans Pen, and I'm working through this. This is available in older editions, actually two volumes in English still. The latest edition, you can see it's, it's, it's 800 pages here, it's combined into one volume, is available only in French at the moment. So I've started dipping in and out of that book, but one of the things I want to do in this third month is to get, again, much more systematic with the Assimil, though it's only going to be a little bit I'm going to be doing each day on that, because the main focus, as I say, is going to be on the main course. I don't want to be bogged down or paralysed by having too many materials. The third supplementary course I want to look at is the, or rather listen to, is the Pinsleur Japanese course, and I decided to get that from my local library, so I had to actually go and join the library, which I did yesterday, and it's not actually available, the beginner's course, at the library here in Brixton, but they're going to get it for me from another library, so it'll be a few days before that arrives. And I hope I'll be able to report back to you on the Pinsleur course when uh, it comes to the end of the third month review uh, here on the YouTube channel. Now, a lot of my language learning friends swear by Pinsleur and love using that course at the beginning of their language learning, particularly for getting the pronunciation correct, because it's purely audio based. So I've been itching for a while for an excuse to try it out. And it seems to me that Japanese is the opportunity to do that. And really, I should, I think, have started uh, right at the beginning with that rather than two months in. Anyway, it's going to be better late than never. Talking of materials, this month I also paid my first visit for a while to Foyle's Bookshop in Charing Cross Road in London. Foyle's is the largest bookshop in London and it's got a brilliant language section. I actually did a video vlog from, from there uh, last year and uh, it's certainly worth visiting if you're a language geek and if you find yourself in London. The temptation is always to come out bogged down with materials which you're then not able to use. Uh, and I managed to resist that temptation, but it was great to go along the Japanese shelves now, because it's the first time I'd been there as a Japanese learner, and to see and get a start to get more of a feel for the different types of materials that are out there, the key textbooks, Genki and so on, some of which I'd read about, but to actually to flick through them physically uh, is useful to give you a sense of the range of materials. Of course, there's a bit of the grass is always greener syndrome kicking in with me wondering, uh, have I got the right course with Japanese from zero? Should I abandon it and go over to Genki instead or several other books that are available? But I decided that really consistency is king with language learning. And I think it to work, you know, uh, uh, habitually and methodically through one course is better than jumping around all over uh, with different materials. So I managed to resist the temptation to uh, try and buy my way into the language with even more, uh, even more books. Looking ahead then, I've got four weeks now in March and I actually now want to finish Japanese from Zero book one and there's still another five units in that. So my work is cut out for me. It's going to be more than a unit a week, particularly if I'm doubling back and doing some uh, doing some uh, repetition, some revision. 
What I've been doing is uh, entering the uh, phrases and some of the key vocabulary into the Anki Spaced Repetition app. I've actually bought the app now. I started um, uh, without the app, but I, I, I've got that. And uh, so I want to keep using that. I've been using that on my commute to revise some of the phrases from the early chapters of Japanese from Zero. But it's been a while since I added in uh, more cards into Anki and because that also takes time. Uh, of course, you can download pre-prepared decks, but I wanted to make my own decks for, for this project. So uh, I want to do some more of that this month too, to, uh, to have another way of uh, doing some repetition and recall testing of what I'm learning and to use that downtime on my commute as I go into the centre of London for the day job. So more Japanese from zero, uh, get systematic with uh, remembering the kanji and a bit of asimil and trying out Pinsler. Those are the aims for uh, March and so I hope by the end of the month I'll be able to tell you that I've finished Japanese from zero and I feel that I'm quite on top of the material. And you'll notice I'm still not doing any speaking practice, so I haven't been booking le lessons as I normally might do on italkai.com uh, with teachers because I felt for this project I want to get the real landscape of the language in my head, if you like, um, before I actually start, uh, start trying to speak. So I'm thinking that might be for me a more efficient way of going rather than paying for lessons when I really just cannot remember anything and uh, can't say, um, you know, very, very much at all. So that's the way I'm going. Does that make sense to you? Let me know in the comments below. If you're an experienced Japanese hand, then I welcome advice. Uh, and similarly, if you're just starting, let me know what approach you're taking. Is it the same as mine or is it different? And uh, yeah, I hope you'll stay with me on the project and you'll tune in for the next update at the end of March. Thanks a lot for watching. Sayonara. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for the vibe. <laughs> Think about a thumbs up, tickle that bell, and share Obby Square. Bye.